lovely. It is partly cloudy with a potential for some rain, I suppose, in the distance. We had a few spatterings of rain not so long ago, and this waterbuck is going to give a bit of a spattering of his poo. But the reason we stopped here was because there's a beautiful little baby waterbuck on the other side of this waterbuck, in between mum and what I suppose we could say dad. But it's very hard to say whether a male waterbuck being in the vicinity of a female waterbuck indicates parental nature or paternity. Hello everybody, my name is Steve. I'm joined by Panda on camera and we are very excited to be with you out and about on Juma where we do have the roof on this afternoon in anticipation for some rain which um, will prevent us from doing some wonderful birding. We will do our best to find some birds this afternoon but what I think we're going to do is to spend some time with these water buck and with the little youngster that uh, when I was here two weeks ago for the week or so before that we were looking all the time right here close to the dam cam close to Gowrie Dam just up on the thickets away from the open area this mama water buck would walk into these thickets regularly and emerge without a baby and I think Lisa the dam cams told me she had seen the youngster but I hadn't seen it yet so on coming down here now we saw mama we saw this gentleman and then lo and behold we found the little baby so very excited for that goodness gracious These two elephant bulls are having a proper go at each other, everybody. We've just moved back. They are both got a bit of bleeding. Got a bit of bleeding. Both are bleeding a little bit on the face and on the on the trunk. Goodness me, everyone, you came back to some crashing. Picture those being your teeth smashing against each other. There he's bleeding on his tusk there. Wow. It's not common to see Elephant bulls having a fight. These two guys waited for you to come to us and then had a proper box. Normally, one will turn the shoulder and show submissive behavior. Neither of them are turning their shoulders. Both of them are standing face on, fighting through the bushes. Now, can you imagine that? These individuals are probably in the region of five tons, metric tons, maybe more and they're throwing themselves at each other. Can you comprehend the physicality? But neither of them are in must, which is interesting. You'd think that there would be something compelling them to be fighting as he devours the buffalo thorn bush. This guy closest to us definitely seems the, the more cooler of, the, of these two customers. Those tusks smashing against each other must be very painful and that is also when they can sometimes break. Some serious technique. You saw how he tried to actually catch him unawares there, jab those tusks. You can imagine if one of them gets into the eye, it's over from an eye point of view. Now we talk about displacement feeding comes to aggression in elephants and when they're pretending to feed you can see this guy on the left now is playing with that stick but he's actually more interested in the elephant and we see that displacement feeding sometimes as a guide if you're walking or you have an elephant on foot or obviously when you're walking on foot you have an elephant in the car and he's sort of idly playing with the branch but not really playing with it that displacement feeding a very good indication of an irritation a potential for the elephant to react in a moment. So you need to be aware of it.
Hey, thanks Tess, uh, and uh, finally we've got our Feline Friday all in the groove. And uh, yes, uh, we've got a nice old male lion f lying flat on his back at the moment. And there's two females to the left, you can't really see them nicely, but we've got a nice view of this uh, male. Well, this is of course, uh, Igor was uh, saying, if you wanted to see the Mahiwas before he leaves. So there it is, Igor, there's your Mahiwa. I'm hoping that you're happy. And this is the blonde male, of course. And flat, 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 passed out. And uh, as you can see, straight on his back with those beautiful red paws of his. It's like he was dancing on a floor that was painted red. Because it is, of course, all the soil. We had so much rain around here, so they've been walking around during the morning and collecting all that red sand. Well, we've counted now, there is three females and the male that's closest to us. And then the female, just two of the females just a little bit further behind him. And then a third female that is now out of uh, picture, but which we can't see from where we are now as well. But thinking about it as well, this morning, it was cold, it was rainy. And you know, many times you'll find cats that are not, they're not too keen to lie in wet grass and the old one trying to get warm and I've seen it many times on the airstrips so most probably these lions came during the morning came to the airstrip where of course the tar is much warmer much more comfortable for them and of course they ended up just lying around the airstrip area We've got a Gabal Gosok back at the weaver's nest, and I think it got one. It looks like it has something in its claws. Look, it's definitely holding something. I think it got a chick. It's just been hanging off the nests. Yeah, look, it's hopping. It's got something in its claws. Ah, <gasps> it's flying off with it. It got a chick. It got a chick, it got a chick. No, it's leaving. It's being chased. Okay, it's landed up here. Let's see where it is in that tree. Oh, that's very well hidden. We've got a big herd of buffaloes here at the moment. And they look like they have been appreciating the big open area of Chitwa Chitwa. Now slowly coming up from the water's edge. Let's hope they're going to come closer, but it looks like they might go straight into the riverbed. And I think this might be the herd of buffaloes that Steve had yesterday morning and we had the day before that were on Juma. So we're now southeast of the Juma property. And it would make sense that this would be the same herd that's doing a couple of circles, trying their best to avoid lions. It's been very nice sitting with this herd of buffalo. So we were talking about different photographic settings, going from the buffalo to the barn swallows and things like that. And earlier on in the afternoon, I was saying how lighting can make or break your picture. Look at this, what we've got now. Look how it's the light has come out we've obviously got that late afternoon glow and it's completely changed it's transformed the the feel of the image you know so this is the time i would look to take a lot of the pictures that i would want to keep in my portfolio there he is there's our black back jackal that's what we were really hoping for and he's an absolute beauty as you can see, the light is fading, so I'm, I'm going to just show him for just a little bit. But this is exactly what we were hoping for. I talked about maybe hearing them calling for us. And this is a beautiful sighting of a black-back jackal. He's not far from the car. He's maybe only 10 meters or so away. And look at the similarity in his coloration, that orange color to that termite mound that we've got there. So he's more than likely only just started to get active for the evening. And remember, he's going to eat a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But what an amazing way to end off our drive. 
and I feel like it's a very fitting way to end off our day here with not a breath of wind. A few of our small little insects starting to call. And hopefully we'll see all of you tomorrow, bright and bushy-eyed. But to all of us, or from all of us rather, from the Wild Earth team, thanks for joining us and take it easy. Music